gifted and safi Ramadan Mubarak Holy Records Ramadan Mubarak Nakula Muslim Thank you very much, um, brothers and sisters, again. I mean, simply, we are introducing the host for Simplify. Um, it's a sister that I came about um, to the Saturday Night Live program hosted by Sheikh Yassin Jalo, and we are part of the tech team. And uh, it was during an incident we have in one of our program. She reached out to me and said, "Brother, you know, this is what I'm doing. I just want you to look at it." And I'll, I, I, she sent me several videos which I looked at. And I like the, what she was doing. She has been in Dawa program. She has been reaching out to people who are less fortunate, people who are Muslim by name, but their activities are not Islam. So as a result of that, she has been doing video recording, audio recording, where she reached out to people. And they, you know, they appreciate what she's doing. And, and myself, the video that I saw, I did appreciate it. And um, that's why I get involved to help her out. Alhamdulillah, we've been reached out to a few people that we know who are pullers and shakers, like myself, Sister uh, Fatma in in uh, in London. In, in uh, she's one of them. She's, she's somebody that I know, uh, somebody that I have great respect for. She she herself has been in the field of Dawa for some time, you know, and um, and uh, she's a very good speaker too, you know. And also my brother called Yonta, which I cannot talk much about. We've been together for over 20 plus years. Alhamdulillah, the friendship and brotherhood is still I there. I think I'll do a justice with that so, one. <laughs> so, um, um, as a result of that, we talked and we look at the the need to go into a large, larger scale than what our sister used to do before. Because our sister was, on a, was doing what she used to do, but it was not as reaching out to more people. So with that, said she will have the opportunity to talk much about her activities but that's how we we came to being and where we call ourselves simplified simple mean we want to reach out to the less fortunate people people that uh, need help need assistance and alhamdulillah last sunday with the help of the brothers in nigeria we were able to do food drive in nigeria in which 121 family get benefit out of this food drive. This was done all because of our sister's activities. So, you know, I want to thank her for that. And I want to thank all of us that joined us this morning, this afternoon. And uh, we pray that the Almighty Allah continue to bless us all. So without any further waste of time, I'm going to introduce to you our pioneer, the person that came about with the idea of Simplified, Sister Bukula Abiola. Bismillah. Mashallah. Thank you very much, Brother Bakar. Jazakallah Hiram. May Allah reward you in his most abundance, in the way that only he can reward you. And the old team, the old simplified team, Jazakallah Hiram. We are all thrusted into um, this world. And the best way to live, to live a successful life is to have a template and to have a roadmap. And Allah has given us the roadmap, which is al Quran. May Allah help us to walk in the righteous path, to follow his roadmap as is intended to be followed. I mean, um, simplified, I'm so grateful to Allah. I'm so grateful to Allah because this is my life's work. And a lot of people die without reaching their potential, without being able to carry out the purpose of their lives. And alhamdulillah, and all the awesome, humble servants of Allah that I've come across in this journey that has helped to support the journey, 
to feed the people that we may never ever see in our lifetime, that only we can see in our Jana Fridaus. And we're reaching out to all these people. We cater to their souls. We give them the food of soul and the food of the belly. May align his infinite mercy reward every single one of us in the only way that he can reward. It gives me the utmost honor to introduce to you today my beloved, beautiful brother, Brother Corey Hunter. It's a pleasure of Allah that I come to know you. I've known of you, I've heard of you, and Allah give me the privilege to also come to know you and know your beautiful, lovely wife that lend you to the day every moment that Allah calls. May your union never be broken, inshallah. It gives me great honor to introduce my brother, Corey Hunter. Brother Corey Hunter is approaching his second decade as an educator and his passion for teaching and training is as strong now as when he first began his career. And my people, please forgive my voice. You know, Ramadan time, we have one thing in common, we pray. So I'm losing my voice in the process. So please bear with my hoarse voice. Thank you. Brother Corey Hunter currently serves on the teaching faculty at King University and Union County College with over 15 years of professional experience in corporate training and performance coaching. Brother Corey has earned the Masters of Arts in teaching from University of Southern California. He has also earned the Master of Science in Management and Leadership from Western, Com Western Governor University. Brakori is currently a PhD student, mashallah, at Grand Canyon University, specializing in organizational leadership, organizational development. <laughs> Brakori is an executive director of the John Maxwell team. He is certified in leadership and performance coach trainer with unique skills, providing professional learning that increases awareness that contributes to the personal growth and development. He is also a Maxwell certified DISC behavioral analysis consultant, helping individuals discover their strengths, motivators, ideal work environment, communication style, and more. On behalf of Allah, on behalf of Islam, on behalf of Al Korean, on behalf of Simplified Heart, I introduce you, my brother, my beautiful, beautiful heart, brother Corey Hunter. Maria Babikun. Jazakallah Khaira, my dear sister. Um, before, before I get started with the official address, yes, yes. Um, I, I first want to uh, just take a moment to, to, to say thank you for inviting me on the program. Uh, thank you for having a, a, a lengthy conversation with me and, and for telling me your story and what led you to, uh, to pursue Simplified Heart. It's really an honor and a privilege for you to bring me into your body of work. And I hope today that inshallah, I can uh, add value to the people that are on the call. Um, and, you know, Anytime, Brother Bakar sent me a message yesterday and he said, can you send me your bio? And he sent me that message at about, uh, he sent me the message at about 6.30 p.m. And I didn't send it to him. I, I hope I didn't wake him, but I sent it to him at about one o'clock in the morning. And the reason why I was very hesitant to send him the bio is because I would rather be called Abdullah, servant of Allah. This is the title that I'm most pleased with to be called Abdullah, servant of Allah. Um, and I, I want to thank my, my dear brother, Bakar, and we've known each other for more than 20 years. We go so far back. And when I first started my journey, um, you know, when I first started my journey uh, at the age of 19, when I traveled to Syria to study uh, Islamic studies, Quran, and then led me to uh, then go to, to Jordan and then to Egypt. And I was studying around uh, with the people of knowledge, trying to learn the deen. And when I came back to America at the time, 
I, I can remember I was a, a, a chaplain in, I was, I was, I was uh, 20 years old as a chaplain in, in, this, in, the, uh, in the county prison. So I was working there as a chaplain doing the imam duties in the prison. And I was 19 years old and I, I met Brother Bakar. And, and at the time I was very active in Dawah, very, very active in Dawah, very active in learning. And then I decided to pursue a career in uh, corporate America. So I kind of left off the Dawah work. Uh, I wasn't very active in it. And so Brother Bakar has, for the last, well, as soon as he found out that I was back in America from Saudi Arabia, he just right away, he, he has, all, for the past 20 years, he has insisted that I um, become a part of giving Dawah in some way, shape, or form. And I have to tell you that there's times where I, I didn't want to do it, but he just pushes me and pushes me and pushes me. Um, and so for that, I want to thank him because we know that, that the, the Prophet Sallam said that if, if someone, if someone, um, if someone turns to the way of Allah because of your efforts, it's better that it's better for you than, than red camels and red camels to the Arabs back then were special, I guess to AIDS for us, it would be, uh, it would really be like a Mercedes, I guess you could say, uh, in terms of our lifestyles and, and really, um, I don't like the 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 uh, the terms of of sheikh and because I don't see myself as a sheikh, I see myself only as the talibul alim, only as a student of knowledge, nothing else, uh, rather than a student of knowledge. And the only reason why I am compelled to do these talks and these lectures, and there's so many other qualified people who are much more qualified than I am to to deliver these uh, these lectures. I do I see. Uh, my beloved uh, Imam Taslim on the call. I almost feel ashamed to be giving a talk when Imam Taslim is on the call. Um, but I'm only, what, what compels me to give talks when I'm invited is living out the hadith of the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where he said, Convey from me, even if it's only one ayah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed me with very little knowledge. And so it's only out of that sense of fulfilling the obligation of conveying from the Prophet Sallallahu even if it's only one ayat, that I humbly come before you uh, to talk to you and to deliver you an address in this blessed month of Ramadan. Okay, so that's just my brief introduction. And now I'm going to start with the kind of official uh, Islamic introduction. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا تق الله حق تقاته ولا تمنتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وقلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحم إن الله كان عليكم ركيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وخير حد حد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر عمور محفتاتها وكل محفتة بدع وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار الحمد لله we praise Allah we seek His assistance we seek refuge with Allah from the evil within ourselves whoever Allah سبحانه وتعالى guides no one can lead him astray and whoever is led astray you will find no guide for him except Allah I openly bear witness that nothing has the right to be worshipped other than Allah. He is alone and has no partners. And I bear witness that Muhammad is his last slave and message, messenger. All you who believe, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he ought to be feared and do not die except in a state of al-Islam. O humanity, fear your Lord who has created you from a single soul and created from it its mate and scattered from them too many men and women. And fear Allah to whom you demand your mutual rights Indeed, Allah is a raqib and a watcher over you. O you who believe, say that which is uh, straight to the truth and correct in order that Allah might forgive you 
may forgive you of your sins and rectify for you your affairs. Whoever obeys Allah and his messenger has indeed achieved the greatest of achievement. As for what proceeds, the best of speech is the book of Allah. And the fighting's guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of affairs are newly invented matters in the religion. Every newly invented matter in the religion is a bidah. Every bidah is a string and every string is in the hellfire. Uh, my dear respected brothers and sisters, uh, it is, as I mentioned, an honor and a pleasure to be here with you today. Inshallah, for this uh, short time that we have together during this blessed month of Ramadan, I would like to talk to you on the topic of maximizing the rewards of Ramadan. Maximizing the rewards of Ramadan. And when we think about Ramadan, the month of the Quran, the month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent down the Quran, this month is like no other month. This month is like no other month. This month is not a month just for Muslims. This month is a month for humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the Quran for all of humanity. Whether a person is Muslim or a non-Muslim, whether the person is a person, uh, a person of faith or not of faith, whether the person is an atheist. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the Qur'an for all of mankind. And after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the Qur'an, he reminds us in Surah Al-Baqarah, after A'udhu Billahi min al-Shaytan al-Rajim, Bismillahi rahman rahim where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us, وَعَتَسِمُوا بِحَبَلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا Hold fast, all of you, to the rope of Allah. And the scholars of Tasir has told us that the rope of Allah is the book of Allah, the Qur'an. So Ramadan is a month of the Qur'an. And the Qur'an was sent down to all of mankind as the final message and as a mercy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on top of that, he sent us the final messenger to all of humanity, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There are many differences that had arise from amongst people in the past. Those who came, who received the books before the Quran, you would find that people were engaged in disagreements about the book. There were certain religious people before the Quran was revealed. And some of those people were considered religious people. And they were responsible for, when the revelation came down, writing down the revelation, and then explaining it to the people. Writing down what was revealed and then explaining it to the people. But unfortunately, because of the nature of man and our imperfection, some of them decided to write down something with their hands that wasn't from Allah. And they would give that to the people and say it was from Allah. This is before the Quran was revealed. Some of the other books that were revealed before the Quran, there were people that were in charge of those books and the revelation, and the people would be responsible for explaining the religion to the people. Why? Because the people, didn't, they were illiterate. The people couldn't read or write. The Rabbanis, they were the ones that had the ability to read and write. They were the religious authority that was responsible for disseminating the revelation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down in the books and the revelation before the Quran. And alhamdulillah, in our final book that was revealed to our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Prophet of humanity, and Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the book, he also sent Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he also, in the book, gave the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the authority, the authority, to direct and to provide guidance to the people as it relates to the book of Allah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, 
وأنزلنا إليك ذكر لتبين للناس ما نزل إليهم We have sent down with you this book the reminder in order that you may explain it to people so that people would not be dependent on a handful of individuals responsible for communicating the affairs of Allah with humanity and they're responsible for writing it and the people at the time couldn't read or write so they have no way of verifying and Allah Allah questioned them in the Quran do you write this with your own hands and give it to the people and say it's from Allah subhanallah so today we have the Quran with us and the Quran is a magnificent book Many of the Muslims hold the Quran near and dear to their hearts. Alhamdulillah. And sometimes during the month of Ramadan, we haven't read it the whole year, so we got to kind of dust it off. And that's okay too. That's okay too. But in order for us to maximize the rewards of Ramadan, we need to understand the nature of the month. And the nature of the month, it is the month that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an, that he sent it down in this month. Why? How do we maximize the benefits of Ramadan, the rewards of Ramadan? So for the past 20 years, during the month of Ramadan, I, when Ramadan approaches, I start reading about two weeks before I start reading a book and I've been reading it for more than 20 years. And the name of this book is Fasting in the Month of Ramadan as Observed by the Prophet. And the authors are Sheikh Salim Halali and Sheikh Ali Hassan. Fasting in the Month of Ramadan as Observed by the Prophet. Every single year, and the book is a very small book. This book is not written for scholars or for students of knowledge. It's written for the average person. 100 pages. From the 100 pages, the two sheikhs, what, what do they do? They bring all of the hadith, all of the ayat, they compile it in less than 100 pages in layman terms so that we can understand the, 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 the rites and rituals of Ramadan. So the first way to maximize the rewards of Ramadan is seeking knowledge. Seeking knowledge. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated for us in the book so many rulings related to Ramadan. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyam kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablakum la'alla kunta attakun. Fasting is prescribed for you as it has been prescribed for those who came before you in order that you may reach a level of taqwa. Reach a level of taqwa. Some people say that taqwa means fear. Some people say that taqwa means consciousness. Taqwa is a state of being. You see, in our busy lives and our working and taking care of our families and trying to raise the kids and you know driving the kid from this sport to that sport and being the teacher in these days of covid <laughs> right my wife does a lot of the teaching and doing all of these different things so because our our lives become so busy and so filled with all of these things we sometimes sometimes in our lives we are no longer in alignment spiritually with our creator. We, lead, we, 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 we lose the spiritual alignment. We lose that spiritual alignment. And so when we pray, we pray in haste because we're in a rush. We don't pray with the khushu that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us. When he said, Sallu kamara usalli, pray as you have seen me pray. But we pray in haste 
because we have to get back to our busy lives. And so we might miss opportunities to connect with the Creator, the Rabbul Alameen. So our lives become so busy. And we, we, we spend a lot of time becoming mature physically. We become mature intellectually. But we lose the maturity and we become underdeveloped and immature spiritually. And so Ramadan is a month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling us back. Allah is calling us back to an opportunity to become reconnected with our Creator. Allah is calling us back in order for us to become spiritually aligned. If you think about the work that our dear sister did, when I heard the story of feeding, when I heard the story of the sister putting together the effort to feed 120 families of people who she will maybe never meet. This is what Allah is calling us to. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu qutiba alaykum isiyam kaman qutiba ala ladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattakum. This is the taqwa that Allah is calling us to. It's the consciousness. It's the God consciousness. And it is through that God consciousness that we recognize the spiritual pain of those who are least amongst us. When we recognize the spiritual work and development that needs to take place from those who are the least amongst us. You see the litmus test for any society, the litmus test for any society is how we treat the least amongst us. So if you want to examine the greatness of a society, take the microscope of that society, put that society under the microscope and look at how they treat the weak and the poor. And so in our busy lives, and our lives that are filled with noise and social media and hours and hours of Netflix marathons. We are not in alignment with the consciousness. Our souls are not created, connected to Allah in the way that they should. And because they're not, our souls are not connected to our fellow human beings. So we lose that connection. It is only when we are at a state of taqwa that we can feel the hunger of the hungry. It is only in a state of taqwa that we can feel the pain of a mother who doesn't know where the next meal will come from to feed her kids. It is only through a state of taqwa that we can begin to hold a society accountable where it's law enforcement guns down a portion of its citizen based on the color of their skin. Such a society is a society that this is, this is moral bankruptcy. Dr. Martin Luther King once said, it is not, it's the silence of your friends. It is to see the outrage, to see the spillover into the streets and to be silent and to have inaction. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during the month of Ramadan, <coughs> calls us back to give us the opportunity to have our souls reconnected with him. And the best way for us to serve Allah is to serve humanity. The best way for us 
to serve Allah is to serve humanity. I call it living Islam. You see, in Islam, we have beliefs. In Islam, we have rituals, we have practices. And so many folks get caught up in the rituals and the practices in the cultural aspects of the religion. <coughs> but what is most important about our religion is the essence of the religion. I can remember times when I was still studying and when we would go to the madrasa and we would learn the different issues of fiqh from the Maliki school and from the Hanbali, and from the Maliki school and the Hanbali school and the Abu Hanifa school and the Shafi'i school. And some people would even say that Imam Awza'i should have had his own madhab. He was strong. So the students are arguing over these kind of thick issues, right? About where we should put our hands in the prayer. Should they be here? Should they be here? Should they be on the side? arguing over why Imam Malik prayed with his hands to the side, <laughs> right? And we're so engaged in all of these small minor issues. But what most of us at that time would, would miss out on <coughs> is the, the essence of Islam, the spiritual essence of Islam. So I can remember a time when I was in Egypt when my friends and I were engaged in this conversation <laughs> about where the hands go in the prayer, where, where did the prophet say the hands go? We're walking down the street in Egypt, having this conversation. And we're kind of debating about it. Oh no, brother, you know that in the class, they were saying this, then even, and we're kind of testing our intellectual rigor. And we walk past a homeless man we walked past a homeless man and he, came, he, he recognized that we were from the States. Because you know, when you travel, when you're American and you travel outside of the country, when you, they see you coming, they know, Amriki, Amriki. They see the dollar signs. And so <laughs> they expect you to give from what Allah gave you. And as we were walking down the street in Egypt, arguing over the thick issue of where to put the hands in the prayer, the homeless man approached us. He knew that we were Americans. He could tell by the way we were walking and the way we were talking and the arrogance that we had about us. May Allah protect us from it and guide us. And he came up to us and he said to us in Arabic, give me money. Give me money. And then the students that I was with at the time, they started arguing about the religious ruling on if we should give poor people money when they beg. And I said, I don't need to know any scholar's opinion. I don't need to know any fiqh's opinion about giving money to the poor. And if giving the money is going to encourage them, I said, you can debate with yourselves as long as you want. I went into my pocket and I said, the question of helping a homeless man, to me, it's not a thick issue. It's not up for debate. So I went into my pocket and I gave the homeless man money. We continued to walk. And then they started arguing about the opinion, the scholarly opinion about if we give homeless people money, if it's going to encourage them to continue begging. I said, brother, you're missing the essence of the religion. You're missing the essence of Islam. The Prophet ﷺ told us, if you go to bed with your stomach full, and your neighbor's hungry, you are not a Muslim. Now, the prophet's not saying you're not a Muslim, not a Muslim, 
what he's telling you is that you're not living the essence of Islam. Sure, we have to pray, we have to fast, we have to do all of these things. All of these things are a part of the religion. But if all of these things don't lead us to taqwa and God consciousness, as Allah had set aside this month for us to make the magnificent journey back to him. So how can we maximize the rewards of this month? Number one, seeking knowledge about the month of Ramadan. The whole, throughout the whole month, we should be engaged in halakas. We should be constantly learning about the rulings of Ramadan. My wife says to me, why do you read this book? You've been reading it every year. When the book gets old and it starts falling off the cover, I order another book. She said, why do you keep reading the same book every year for 20 years? I said, I, I don't want to miss anything. What if I forget something? What if there's some small deed that the Prophet ﷺ had mentioned that's easy for me to do that I miss? So to maximize the rewards of, of Ramadan, we have to seek knowledge. The Prophet ﷺ said, Talib al ala kull Muslim. Seeking knowledge is incumbent upon every single Muslim. Why is that? Why is our religion a knowledge-based religion? Why does Allah first say in the Quran, فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ He told us, فَعَلَمْ To know before. When we're saying la ilaha illallah, fa'alam first, knowledge comes first. Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah, when he wrote his books on, on fiqh, he, he had a, a book that he titled that knowledge precedes action. The book of knowledge precedes action. So to maximize the rewards of Ramadan, we have to be seeking knowledge about the month of Ramadan. It doesn't matter if Islam has been in your family for a thousand years. It doesn't matter if hundreds and hundreds of your forefathers were scholars of the religion. It doesn't matter if you have people in your family and you have traces back to the Prophet wasallam. Seeking knowledge is incumbent upon every Muslim. That's us. Why? Remember the story I told you about the men who would write with their hands and give it to the people and say, this is from Allah? Before the Quran came, the books that came before us, the people couldn't read and write. So the religious rabbis at the time who wore the religious robes and were the maintainers of the religion at the time would write when Allah would reveal they are, they are ordered to write this is from Allah our beloved Prophet Sallallahu had a scribe when the Quran would come our beloved Prophet had a scribe but the people of the old People of old, other books, other revelation that was revealed, they would interpret. They would come between Allah and the people and they would write, Allah would reveal one thing, they would change it to suit their, their own selves. So now for you and I, the Prophet ﷺ said, la, la, no, 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 no. Talibu al-im farida ala kulli muslim. Seeking knowledge is incumbent upon every muslim. We cannot delegate the responsibility that we have to educate ourselves. Do we have to become scholars? No, of course not. But the basic principles of our religion, we, we, we have to learn them. It is incumbent upon us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Ask those who know when you don't know. You see, 
It's a knowledge-based religion. And there's too many benefits to mention about seeking knowledge. So to maximize our rewards in Ramadan, it has to be through the bab, through the door of knowledge and seeking knowledge so that we can take from the lessons of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And as we do that, you'll find so many opportunities. This is the month of giving. We should be giving as much as we can to maximize the rewards of Ramadan. Giving from what Allah had blessed us in money, in time, in effort during this month. To maximize the rewards of Ramadan, we should be increasing our sunnah prayers during the month of Ramadan to maximize the rewards. We should be doing everything that we can to pray on time during the month of Ramadan in order to maximize the benefits. We should be taking the pre-dawn meal, the suhoor, because the Prophet ﷺ said, verily, in it is a blessing to maximize the month of Ramadan. For the men, if you have the ability, we're living in COVID times where everyone is working from home. In the month of Ramadan, if your masjid is open, for the brothers that are on the call, here's an opportunity for you to get out of the house. <laughs> if your wife is driving you crazy, <laughs> During the month of Ramadan to maximize the rewards, go pray in Jama'ah. Huh? During the month of Ramadan, increase in your supplication to maximize the rewards. We know that the Prophet ﷺ said that the fasting person, the dua of the fasting person is not rejected. So to maximize, we should increase our dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To maximize the rewards of the month of Ramadan, we should, if possible, and in accordance with uh, established safety principles of COVID, if we can, we should pray Tarawiyah in the masjid behind the Imam. The Prophet ﷺ said, whoever enters into Ramadan seeking its reward, in faith, Allah will forgive all of their previous sins. If we, the Prophet ﷺ told us about praying behind the Imam, that if we pray behind the Imam until the Imam finishes the prayer, I don't mean after the first four rakas, the Imam finishes praying, then the people congregate in the back and they start having conversations about things that have nothing to do with remembering Allah when the young kids are there on their cell phones playing the games or on Snapchat Instagram all of these things in the month of Ramadan we want to put on the back burner but staying with the imam until he finishes the prayer in its entirety the prophet ﷺ said that if we do that we will get the reward of having prayed all night so that is a way to maximize the rewards of the month of Ramadan. And the last one that I want to talk about is the big, 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 <laughs> the big reward, the biggest reward. The last 10 nights of Ramadan The last 10 nights of Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ during the month of Ramadan, the last 10 nights, he would tighten his waist, tight, tighten the azar. Some of the uh, people of knowledge said that it means that the Prophet ﷺ would abstain from his wives and focus on the prayer. And others have said that it means, as we say today, you roll up your sleeves and get ready for the work. Now here is a man, our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has been forgiven for all of his previous sins, all of his future sins. And we see him during the month of Ramadan, the last 10 nights, leaving off everything 
accept ibadat. If you want to maximize the rewards of Ramadan, protect the last 10 nights of Ramadan as if it was a mountain of gold. Because it's even a mountain of gold that you've just discovered and you don't want anyone else to know. <laughs> right? Because it's greater than that in rewards. That is Laylatul Qadr, seeking out Laylatul Qadr during the last 10 nights. And we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed a very, very short surah from the Quran. And the short surah is one of the most powerful verse, uh, powerful verses, uh, powerful surahs in the Quran that tells us some of the magnificent rewards that await us as we seek out the last 10 nights of Ramadan. And I know we're only the first week in, right? So we have some ways to go. But what tends to happen is we start off Ramadan enthusiastic, very strong. And then toward the middle, we get fatigued. We get tired. So then we start to slow down on some of our ibadat. And then during the last 10 days, we go back and we re-engage. The month is so great that we must pace ourselves. We must set an agenda for ourselves. We must set a program for ourselves, individually, for ourselves that we can commit to. We can't come into Ramadan and exude all of our energy on the front end and then get to the middle and we're just like, Ugh. we don't have any energy left. It's a month where we should be engaging with the Qur'an, reading the Qur'an. And so one of the ways to do that is to put ourselves on a program that we can commit to. Every day between Maghrib and Isha, I'm going to read the Qur'an. Every day after Fajr, I'm going to spend, I don't know, 20 minutes reciting the Qur'an before I jump back into bed, right? So any kind of a program that we can stick to for ourselves, that we can commit to, to allow us to re-engage ourselves with the Qur'an, reading the Qur'an. Now, when we are reading the Qur'an, we don't want to just simply read it in Arabic if we don't understand Arabic. If you read it in Arabic, you understand the language, if you don't understand Arabic, you should read it in Arabic, which you are capable of doing. And then you should read it in a language that you understand. You see, it's, there's tremendous benefits of reading it in Arabic. If you don't understand, how are you going to connect with your Lord? When you read the Quran, Allah is speaking to you, Ya Abdullah. Allah is speaking to you, ya amatullah, O servants of Allah, O slaves of Allah. Allah is speaking to you and I. When we read the Quran, it's a way of us reconnecting, realigning spiritually. The Quran was revealed more than 1400, day, 1400 years ago. There's no book to come after it. It's from then until the last day of judgment. The verses of the Qur'an that were revealed to the Prophet Sallam and his companions, to Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman, the verses calling us to Sadaqa. Huh? These are the same verses that are revealed to us. It's not going to change. The verses that our mother Aisha radiallahu anha, that she heard and that she taught to the people, same verses. So we should take Ramadan as a time and we should commit a time to re-engaging ourselves with the Qur'an in order that we may grow in our spirituality. During the last 10 nights of Ramadan, we want to seek out Laylatul Qadr on one of the odd nights. We want to, during that time, 
try to pray as much as we possibly can. We want to wake our families up for prayer during those last 10 nights as our beloved Prophet Sallallahu did. We want to make a lot of supplication. We want to make a lot of supplication. Inshallah. We want to make a lot of supplication. Why? This month of Ramadan that was refilled does not only benefit Muslims. The month of Ramadan benefits all of humanity. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Qadr, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن أنزلناه في ليلة القدر وما أدراك ما ليلة القدر ليلة القدر خير من ألف شهر تنزل الملائكة والروح فيها بإذن ربهم من كل أمر سلام هي حتى ما طلع الفجر الله سبحانه وتعالى says that what means in English Indeed, we have sent down this Qur'an in the night of glory. And what will make you to understand what the night of glory is? The night of glory is better than 1,000 months. That's 83 years. The night that the angels and the Qudus descend by the permission of their Lord for every decreed matter. It is all peaceful until the break of dawn. This night of power will benefit all of humanity. Our prayers, our supplication for our fellow brothers and sisters, regardless of their faith, regardless of their uh, ethnicity, regardless of their background, we should be using this time to supplicate for humanity. When the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to pray for rain, when he used to make dua for rain in Medina, was he making dua for the Muslims only? Oh Allah, let it rain over here so that we can benefit, but don't let it rain on the other side where the people believe something different. No. This month of Ramadan is a, is a month of mercy, a month of forgiveness. It's an opportunity for us to invite people to the way of our Lord. It's a way for us to help the needy. It's a way for us to support those who need support, those who might be struggling. It's a way for, during this time, we should be calling people who we haven't spoken to in some time. This COVID have, has been really difficult on people mentally, emotionally. Using this time during the month of Ramadan to call someone and to, and, to, and to give them a positive word, to remind them of the mercy of Allah during this month, to remind them about the power that Allah can forgive and Allah can sustain. And so if we do those things, then we will truly benefit and maximize the rewards of the month of Ramadan. Aqulu qawli hadha. استغفر لي ولكم واتوب إليك وجزاكم الله خيرهم بارك الله فيك كبير كبير الله أكبر ما شاء الله بارك الله you really nail it الله أكبر كبيرة it was a well presented um, message may Allah give us the blessing of it inshallah Amen. So um, at this time, I want to acknowledge the presence of uh, some of our elders and also sheikhs that are on the line with us. First of all, I want to start with um, Sheikh Muhammad Taslim Al Ghali, who is the Imam of the Syrian Muslim Jamaat in Maryland, and also we have one of our sheikh who was with us last week, Sheikh Ahmed. He's uh, currently in Nigeria and he is with us and he has been making a lot of comments, positive comments on the chat line. We want to thank you for doing that, sir, and we acknowledge your presence, sir. So at this time, we're going to open the floor for discussion. 
Well, before we move to that, I want to also use this opportunity again to once again introduce the team of Simplified. We are five in numbers. Again, the person that came up with the idea is Sister Bukala Abiola. And uh, we have, okay, we have, who is our host? We have Sister Fatma Nsumi from London. Um, we have our brother, two brothers, wonderful brothers who have been doing a lot of work in Nigeria. They are the people responsible for all the moving and shaking in Nigeria. We mm -hmm. want to thank them for all the efforts. Um, Brother Abiola is there, and Brother, I forget his name. Brother. Baba Kone. Okay. Yes. Adekone. Adekone. Brother Adekone also is there in Nigeria. So we want to thank everyone and myself, myself also here in New Jersey. We are the team behind Simplified. Again, like I told you at the start, we, you know, currently did some food drive program in Nigeria and we're looking to do more throughout the period of fasting. And the last week or last 10 days in Ramadan, we are looking to feed as many people as we just don't want to only concentrate in Nigeria, but inshallah, this program will be also going to Sierra Leone inshallah to provide help for our people in Sierra Leone. So we want oh, to ask you if you can help out, if you can help out, inshallah, please help us so we can raise money to help those less fortunate people around the world, inshallah. Amen. So at this time, I'm going to, I want to yield a few minutes to Sister Fatima, if you have a comment before we go to the general audience. Sister Fatima, if you do want to make a comment, please go ahead. Sister Fatma. Yeah. alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi Sister Fatma, we, Sister Fatma, just one minute. I just want to let you know we have a, Imam Teslim on the line. The body. <laughs> <laughs> so bismillah. Uh, yes, uh, just as Brother brother Hunter said, you know, when Imam Teslim is on the line, then uh, I get a bit nervous. But it's so nice to reconnect with him after so many years. Uh, the last time I saw him probably... 10 years in Sierra Leone. So a, sal a special salam to Imam Taslim, inshallah. And uh, to everybody that uh, was able to join us. Um, I I'm fairly new to the team myself, uh, but one thing I know is, um, subhanAllah, the, 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 the hearts in the team are superb. Okay? And uh, uh, the simplicity is everywhere. That's why it's not a surprise that we, we, we asked you, Corey, to come and join us because at the end of the day, um, they are lo subhanAllah for the people that are already, already learned, yeah, and for the people that uh, subhanAllah their iman is already there, there's a lot of platforms and they don't, they don't need too much uh, inshallah encouragement. But what sister, uh, my sister is doing here is to reach out uh, to those who are still trying their level best. They want to be better Muslims, but they're struggling for whatever reason, uh, whether it's uh, the politics, whether it's the image of Islam, uh, whether it's just a lack of time, like you mentioned in your lecture, uh, and they're not able to pursue uh, and know their deen. And this is why I joined Simplified Hearts, because uh, I, I really believe there's so many good hearts out there uh, that love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yeah, but they don't have the platform uh, uh, to be to be encouraged and to be to, to be to be taken uh, from from where they are. And one of the things that uh, I remember uh, reading, where uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to Ali radiyallahu anhu, "Speak to people from where they are." Okay, so I really believe there are a lot of platforms out there, and when our big sheikhs, you know, not, you know, I respect them a lot when they're speaking. Sometimes they're speaking to the converted. Okay, but for a lot of our beautiful, wonderful sisters who love Allah but uh, uh, feel a bit uh, left out and judged and whatever you you think about it, uh, this is where we want to bring them here and say, you know what, Allah looks at your heart, and we are here not to judge anyone, but to allow you to develop in your own pace. Because at the end of the day, yeah, we all want a genital for those. So uh, yes. when, I, when, I, when I saw you giving your um, preamble, I was like, you are the exact person that we want here, inshallah. So jazakallah khairan. 
for joining us and uh, uh, subhanallah appreciating uh, uh, in fact almost being at the core of what we are we are about and yet uh, uh, taking us back uh, to what the essence of psalm is so may allah reward you abundantly you and your family uh, and 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 stay blessed and jazakallah for everyone else that joined us today Thank you very much, Sister Fatma. For our sisters who are online, inshallah, next week, Sunday, same time, Sister Fatma will be the speaker. She will be presenting a topic um, on, on the role of, I'm going to come over to you, Sister. She will be presenting a topic on the role of women in Islam. Over to you, Sister Buki. Mashallah. I think uh, we'll look at the schedule, but I think we have another imam. Sister okay. Fatima is next. Okay. We can have her next. Inshallah. 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 Yeah. Um, if you don't mind, I would like to also, because our eldest uh, brother, the the pillar of my fa of our family, is on the line, and okay. I would like to recognize him as well. His name is by uh, brother uh, Abdi Jalil Omatayo Abiola is on the line. Thank you very much, sir, for coming and for, uh, for everything that you have done for Simplified Arts on behalf of Allah, for mobilizing the family. Mashallah. Jazakallah khairan. Okay. Thank you very much. So brothers and sisters, the line is open for question, but our Anta has presented a well-rounded message to us. If you have a comment, you have a question, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask him your, your question or make your comment. Um, also, if um, Sheikh, um, Sheikh, Sheikh Ahmed want to comment, also he's welcome, and also Imam Taslim. Um, we're going to go to Tower of Love. Sister Tower of Love, please unmute yourself. Yes. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. In fact, thank you so much, our Imam. We really appreciate you and we thank Almighty Allah for bringing you to this forum today. Jazakum Allah, Karen Jazan. May God Almighty Allah bless your home as well. Thank um, you. Um, and secondly, to Sister Bukola Biola, thank you very much. Last week, it was uh, Sheikh Mufti Men. And today is uh, Imam Kori. Oh, I, sorry, I think I put that name right. And pardon me if I don't. Alhamdulillah. In fact, you are just giving us different Imam, and we really appreciate it. We look forward to the next one coming up, mashallah. Jazakallah, Kailan. And thank you for the food drive you did in Nigeria. You did all your effort, you put all your effort together to feed on the privileged people and also thanks to all the donors and mashallah we pray many more people will donate jazakallah khair and jazakallah assalamualaikum mm. everyone wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh thank you very much sister um any other comments question uh imam taslim um imam um sheikh ahmed feel free if you want to come on inshallah Any question, any comment? All right, well, I, I'm, I'm gonna throw this to um, Brother Onta. Since he's in the business of coaching, um, as an expert in this field, I just wanna ask what advice you will give um, to the Simplified team. And also I wanna acknowledge one of our beautiful sister also, Sister Alima Allen. She is a beautiful person that I've worked with on several projects. Um, Sister Ali, do you want to say salam to the group? Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. 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 People are asking for the account numbers uh, of simplified accounts for donation, depending on your location. We currently have accounts in the United States. We're registered in US. 
I'm going to post that account detail. And we also have account in Nigeria. We don't have account in Sierra Leone yet. We're working on that. We brought a car. Inshallah, it will come to place. But for now, we have account in Nigeria and we also have account number in United States. So I will post the United States account number and I also post my phone number because on people, it's easier for them to do Zelle or Cash App or if you want the account number directly, I will post my phone number on the group chat and you can reach out to me. But if I give you my phone number, please don't share it with other people. Please, for the sake of Allah. Thank you. Jazakallah khairan. Brabakar, does that make sense? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. But on over to you, sir. Uh, so, <clears throat> so what I will say is um, that you, you are, Anytime an organization moves from being an organization of success to an organization of significance, your efforts that you're putting in are going to be multiplied uh, in ways that you, you, you won't even be able to imagine, right? Because mm -hmm. most people are chasing success. Most people are chasing success, but when you have a program that you've put together for every single one of you, clearly you are not chasing success. The work that you're doing, you want to be significant. And there's a big difference between success and significance. In Western culture, particularly here in the States, our uh, our cultural values drive us to chase success at all costs. But success is what happens to you. Significance is what happens through you. And so my advice to you all is to keep doing the work that you're doing as a result of you pursuing significance I believe in my heart of hearts, God is going to do the heavy lifting. God is going to do the heavy lifting. Why? You're pursuing significance. It reminds me of the verse in the Quran where Allah is, is questioning when they were in the time of war and they were throwing the stones. And, and Allah asked them, Right? That was it you who threw when you threw it? Was it Allah? Hmm. When you think about, you know, Wamarameta, Idrameta, Walak, and Allah, it, it, you know, was it you who threw when you threw it? Was it Allah? So much of what we're trying to do, we limit ourselves because we're trying to be successful. But when we focus our efforts on serving other people, now we're pursuing significance. Now we're doing the work of God because God will never do for you what he could only do through you. And once you taste significance, you will never be satisfied with success. So I would just say, keep, keep doing the work you're doing. A lot will bring resources and will bring opportunities to you be, beyond what you could fathom. Why? You're not chasing success. You're, you're pursuing significance. You see, this is, you, do you think for a minute that Allah's purpose for us on this earth is for us to come to America, get educated, get a big house, drive a late model car, and then, and then work to pay our debts to the banks for the rest of our lives? No. Allah wants it. Allah, Allah created us with Allah, Allah, Allah created us to fulfill a greater potential than serving our bank loans or the bank notes. We we that's that's the society puts these ideas together that we have to chase success. Once you get out of the rat race and start doing things to serve humanity, to serve people, and you focus on significance, think about it. I mean. Just, 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 
just think about the people that we know in our own lifetime where Allah had done magnificent things to them. Think about sister, our dear sister from Pakistan, Malala Yousafzai, 14-year-old girl who took on the Taliban. Why? She wanted significance. She believed in her heart of hearts that young girls in Afghanistan should be educated. And so as a result of her pursuit, she gets propelled at the age of 17 on the world stage for a Nobel Peace Prize. And now resources are coming to her that she would have never have imagined. A poor, a poor girl from the villages of Afghanistan? Why? When you serve humanity, when you pursue significant, God does the heavy lifting. When you're chasing significance, we try to force it. 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 I'm going to work two jobs. I'm going to work three jobs. I'm going to work and do whatever I have to do to reach a level of success. But force negates. Force negates. Right? When you're chasing, when you're pursuing significance, I'm telling you, someone will give you a donation from nowhere, anonymously. You, where did this check come from? How these resources get to us? Allah does the heavy lifting. Why? You're pursuing significance. So the mission and the work that you're doing, if you stay focused on serving people and serving humanity, it's my belief that God will do the heavy lifting. And in closing, keep simplified simple. Keep simplified simple. Islam is a simple religion. We make it complicated. Allah yuridu bukumul usra wa la yuridu kumul yusra. Allah wants for you ease. He doesn't want for you hardship. We complicate matters. The mission, the vision, keep it that simple. Your vision, your mission, keep it as simple as you have it right.